So today, I've been watching a video about Adam something, and he's been talking about the straddle bus. Yeah, I love him. I like Adam something, and as a subscriber for various years, I been through the gr entire growth of this channel, and I really enjoy a lot of this topic in burning Elon Musk, <laughs> most like, most of the time, yeah. But this time, I think he got himself a little bit too far, and didn't research enough for him to acquire the talk shit license about a straddle bus, because it is not nearly as bad as an idea as he was, you know, set out to say, and set out to make it to sound like. And here's why. We're going to watch through the video with me again, and then I'll talk through all of the reasons why this is a really a non-issue. Let's start the video. Thinking outside the box is blah, 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 blah. Thinking blah. outside the box is the push of the for the truth. Scams. Got messed up. However, as like this happens, like but for too yeah. long, it seems like a neat solution. Who wouldn't spacious want to be comfortably whisked along in a crushing. spacious elevated bus yeah. above the soul crushing bumper to bumper traffic? Who wouldn't want to take part in this amazing transit revolution? Well, stay tuned, I guess. The concept itself was first unveiled in 2010 at the Beijing International High Tech Expo, and by 2016, they actually built a functioning prototype in the city of Qinhuangdao mm -hmm. with 300 meters of track and a station. The idea was simple mm -hmm. and appealing just build two simple tracks on each side of the road and then raise the body of the bus above the cars. Passengers would board at elevated stations along the way. The interior was rather spacious, able to hold around 300 people, about the same mm -hmm. amount as two articulated buses crammed full. The idea itself isn't new, by the way. There was a concept like this before, the bus washed landline, only that would have carried entire buses at high mm -hmm. speeds and then drop them off at set locations. Compared to yeah, that, the straddling bus was a more modest, thus more plausible solution. People hailed the straddling bus as a transit revolution, mm -hmm. deeming it an innovative solution to traffic. But the straddling bus was no revolution. In right. fact, it was the old ultimate embodiment of the state of school. Okay. Allow me to Is explain. First of all, the concept had some relevant problems that were never solved, that couldn't be solved, since mm -hmm. they were fundamental elements of the design. The most obvious problem is space. A straddling bus has to run on wide avenues with at least two lanes per direction. You cannot run it on a normal two-lane street because stuff is in the way. Parking spots, lampposts, signs, garbage bins, benches, pedestrians, balconies even. The system can only function in areas that are separated for the sake of car traffic. This severely limits potential areas of service. I guess what I'm saying is, good luck trying to build a straddling bus okay. in cities not ruined by Robert Moses. So, here's its first problem with his analysis because I'm sorry Adam have you seen Beijing before had you seen any images so without any sort of background of what the location of deployment of this bus is gonna be let's take you through a few images of the Beijing rush hour wide eight-lane traffic a lot of space for perhaps a straddle bus here's another one yep another eight-lane traffic, uh, this is the highway, and yeah, yeah, y you get what I mean. There are no such thing as like a small alley for in which these bus need to be deployed, because for those locations, we have another thing called um, buses that we can deploy. We don't need this thing to run on every existing street, because that's not the point. It's supposed to be a main boulevard transport. And this bus works totally fine, and that is a non-problem. Well, let's continue. Also, the bus is 7 meters wide, which assumes a 3.5 meter lane width, which is not always the case, especially inside cities. Often, lanes are narrowed because wider lanes lead to more speeding and accidents. So you can end up in a situation where one leg of the straddling bus is at the side of the first lane, while the other that leg is, is in the middle again, of the third a lane. problem because the lane sizes on those boulevards are set and it doesn't make sense for you to swerve into a small lane with narrower lane sizes and just not going to happen to where this bus is going to get deployed let's continue also, gotta love how those wide, deep rails go through the crosswalk it'll be fun accidentally and stepping into now talking about the deep rail going into the crosswalk yeah, that is actually one of the biggest problems I feel like I've seen when I see this design, but I feel like that is such an easy thing to engineer around as it's only on the crosswalk where you have this kind of problem. And easy solution is that I already sketched up a little bit. When you have a crosswalk that is something like this, just have something of a flap or a little rotation tube 
something like that, that just go around and cover the tracks, only on the places and stuff, just on the sidewalks. And whenever it's green light for the pedestrian, deploy it and remove it once it's done. Simple idea. I don't see how this will add so a lot of cost to this already very expensive project of transportation. So I don't really see this as a big problem. But and maybe if you want to say, oh, what if the pedestrian was to cross on the red light where this is not deployed? And I don't think that's my problem anymore. If the pedestrian decided that he's not going to follow traffic rules, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think I can protect them. The government can't protect them. I think they're a more urgent problem than just a little groove on the ground. So, whatever. Let's continue. A further problem is the bus itself. It's four, four and a half meters tall. When the city doesn't normally operate double-decker buses and infrastructure isn't designed around such height. On their 3D render, you can even see a section of road lowered so the straddling bus can pass under a pedestrian overpass. It's very silly. Yeah, it's very silly. They can completely rework the overpass around the bus, but not rework the bus around the pass. Yeah, that's pretty silly, but honestly, a very easy solution that can be done. And you cannot really decrease the straddling bus's height either. The yeah. maximum height of vehicles that, that can pass under it is 2 meters mm -hmm. or less. That basically limits you to personal vehicles yes. only, as even most vans are 2 meters tall. So we do see the problem. You can't go higher because you will bump into stuff, and you can't go lower because cars won't be able to That's pass it. below you. You're essentially stuck, sandwiched between two places you really don't want mm -hmm. to be. And so imagine a common van, like a Mercedes Sprinter, catching up with a straddling bus. The van will have to tailgate all the way, stuck behind the bus, blocking an entire traffic lane, defeating the entire purpose of having a straddling bus in the first place. Or maybe the van is in front, stuck in a traffic jam, which means the straddling bus is now also stuck in a traffic jam. By the way, boarding was originally okay. envisioned. So the thing with the vans and the buses uh hold on you, you did realize that you can just move the vans to other lanes of the road right it's not only where the straddle bus is you don't have to go under the straddle bus because it will be deployed on at least four four or more lanes wide and straddle bus takes up two lanes and i don't see why you cannot just not allow bus to drive under the straddle bus it will still be the same amount of traffic on the road it's not going to make the traffic any worse or better it's just like how highway works you cannot drive a big rig in the most inner lane it's simple i don't see that as a problem anyway let's move on vision through large lifts that take a bunch of people to and from the station in and out of the bus. And that's the giveaway right there that this system was designed by people who have no idea how public transit works. If you've ever taken public transit, you know how elevators are the worst thing you can have if you're looking to exchange a lot of passengers in a short amount of time. There is a reason why subways primarily have stairs and escalators. Other potential issues would just be a pain in the ass. What if someone crashes into the legs of the bus? Okay, he will actually debunk that part of the problem himself in maybe two minutes so let's just keep on moving on and we'll talk about this when he debunks it himself the whole thing would need to be shut down traffic stopped and passengers would need to be evacuated if this happens while the bus is in the middle you'll have to close down additional lanes to allow passengers to reach the sidewalk or you can just plop them onto the road underneath i guess yeah just 300 people casually milling around on the road underneath the straddling bus right at the accident site so accidents with these kind of buses here, here's the thing. You do realize that regular buses have accidents, right? What do you do when regular buses have accidents? These buses are nothing but actually safer than regular buses because you don't run the chance of a idiot running into the bus itself and endangering the actual pede like pedestrians, not pedestrians, the passengers. But the buses are actually elevated up above the ground and... I don't see a problem in that. In having an accident, it just sh shit happens. And having 300 people sitting in the, ma the main street of the road, if a regular bus was to crash in the middle of the street, is the same problem. I don't see this as a bigger problem, any bigger problem comparing to a regular bus. If a monorail fail, if a subway fail, it's the same issue. What's the problem here? Anyway, keep going. Neat. 
Also, about those people cutouts, gotta love how they put a grand total of four in there, just like how there are five at the station, four in the elevator, and one inside the bus. Um, that's what engineering companies just do that, just to show the size of these kind of renders. Not really to show people st stuffed into these buses, and if you have a hundred people in these kind of renders, where do you see the bus? I don't see a problem that. Transit bullshit projects seem to work best when transporting very few people, it seems. I'd like to see a render of morning rush hour when 500 people- Um, I don't see why you would need to do that. You cannot see the machine itself if you render 100 people on top of it. People are trying to get in and out. Also, do notice the cute cubicle and the wide, comfy chairs with armrests even. Compare this to a seat layout of actual mass transit designed for quick and large-scale passenger flows like a regular bus. And on regular buses, half the space isn't taken up by huge elevators either. As you can see, this threadling bus is not quite space efficient. At least the prototype looked more like an actual transit system. That's the prototype. It looks like more like a transit system. It got rid of the elevators. It's not a problem. It's only in the engineering renders where these kind of bullshit with the armchairs exist in reality it looks like a proper transit system it's not a problem you're just pointing at the render and poking fun at it but in reality the project's nothing like that them which had normal seats and didn't have the dumb elevators. Now I know what you're thinking. How is all this connected to Harry Potter? You see, uh, the author, she who must not be named, is uh, a centrist uh, liberal. Stay with me, I'm going somewhere with this. And so in the Harry Potter universe, goblins are second class citizens, centaurs are viewed as beasts and are forced into reserves, discrimination against people with non-magical parents is widespread, muggles are viewed as inferior, wizards have their own Guantanamo prison where they torture people, and they keep house elves as slaves. Voldemort and his supremacist ideology are the embodiment of these injustices. He is the logical continuation, if you will. This is contrasted by the heroes and their more egalitarian ideas. The final fight against Voldemort is therefore not just a magical duel, but also a clash of ideologies. By defeating Voldemort, you also defeat his supremacist ideas, changing society for the better. But there's a problem. As I've mentioned, the author is a centrist liberal. As such, she is deathly afraid of change. Actual, meaningful change. Thus, at the end of the Harry Potter series, Voldemort gets defeated through some bullshit one mechanics minutia, and then it's back to business as usual. Goblins remain second class citizens, centaurs are still kept in reserves, Magic Guantanamo stays open, and House themselves remain in chattel slavery. That's because J.K. Rowling clings to the status quo as if her life depended on it. She views it as sacred and untouchable, which then forces her to awkwardly try and work around it instead of making meaningful changes. Which is the exact same thinking that went into the straddling bus. What? Okay, let's keep on watching. Why do we need a bus that glides above the road? Because the road is full of cars. Well then, how about we take a regular bus and designate a bus lane in each direction? Oh no, that would be traffic reduction. We cannot do that. Uh, Th wait, 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 wait. Okay, so yeah, it may- oh, what he said sounds like it makes sense. Unless you know the context in which these buses are going to built in. So, I actually have a script over here, I'm more well prepared than usual. So here's the thing, I don't think he been to Beijing. Fine, add him something, you don't have to be in Beijing or have to be there, been there before to know what it is. You can search up pictures of what Beijing Street looks like and you don't know the public policies is over there and you don't i don't think you're qualified enough to make these kind of comments say oh no you just have to make a bus lane because bus lanes aren't going to work and here is why let's say the public transport you can say oh let's make people move out of their cars and move into public transports because we have a very healthy public transport system but here's a problem there is no more room in public transport because it is at its capacity and there's no easy way of expansion because the subway's already built. You cannot just build another one right alongside it because it doesn't make sense. And a bus lane is just going to be downright awful for this situation. I agree with bus lanes in many other places. Like in Shanghai, there's a Route 71 or something. That's a bus lane in the middle of, I think, the Pushi District. And I really like that bus lane because it makes sense. It doesn't eat into the traffic and it eases congestion. And it's a very good p way of moving people around. And, and then we have Beijing, which is a complete different animal. Because, first of all, guess what? It's not going to fix the problem. Having a bus lane is not going to make people move their asses out of their cars. Because, oh, you have the board draw with the car, the stereotypes in China. And it's not really about them. 
because it's about a raw capacity of the road because guess what china and beijing has tried very very hard to try to move people away from their car into public transport systems and it doesn't work because they already have a million ways of reducing it reducing car in the street such as live license plate they're actually rarer than lottery tickets that winning and registration costs upwards three times of the car and like license plate plates registrations that limits you from driving on which day of the week and none of those help the car is still like that because the demand is like that and adding a bus lane will not help the situation it's only gonna increase the congestion because the amount of cars on the road will not decrease so these stubborn people will not change so what we need is basically enter a system that's parallel to the public transport and as i said previously Beijing, they have trains, they have subway, they have a lot of that, but all of them are at capacity already. And shadow train, I would say it is not, definitely not a good replacement for a proper, like, light rail or monorail or those kind of system. It is not a good replacement, but consider the situation where you already have a public transport system, but that is at maximum capacity, no easy way of expansion. You cannot justify another to spend another few billion dollars to build yet another public transport system like maybe another line of railway that is directly side by side with the existing railway system because that does not make sense money wise and just everything else wise and we have now the straddle bus which is basically a cheaper version of a monorail system that does not have to have just all that kind of previous like investment into building an elevated track you don't have to dig a huge tunnel you just have to plonk some rails onto the road and make it work and it is way cheaper that way and it is just another easy, easy way for the city to justify themselves to have basically another train line that is running alongside a subway, but just in a slightly different form, in the form of an elevated bus. So, yeah, that's, that's my take on it. Keep on watching the video. It gets better. <laughs> That would mean changing the status quo of core dependency. Quo. So let's just try and awkwardly shimmy along the sides of the road and build out all this expensive infrastructure like elevated stations because a few cars were in the way. By reducing car traffic, we wouldn't need expensive bullshit like these overpasses either. We could Doesn't also get rid like of that. the inconvenience caused by traffic congestion. But instead, we get this in the beginning of their video. Occupying resources of roads and with heavy okay, pollution. Dumb. Referring okay, to regular buses. Oh, but of course. Won't somebody think of the road resources and heavy pollution by buses? Don't yeah. look at... That, that is a dumb reason that they're using to justify the elevated rail like i mean the straddle bus yeah that's a dumb reason the giant suvs and big ass sports cars or that kilometers long sea yeah. of cars in front of you we need to take those damn buses up the yeah. road lest we accidentally change the car centric status quo by painting a bus lane on each side which as i previously explained that's not how it works it's not about the status quo it's about straight hard raw capacity solution to the problem these treadling bus tried to solve just paint a damn bus lane in the end these treadling bus of course failed by virtue of being a really stupid idea it's not a very stupid idea it is uh, it's failed is a tragedy because of various reasons of he's gonna explain it and also due to complaints filed against the developers by investors on suspicion of embezzlement which ended in 32 arrests yeah, yeah that's what happened with the shadow bus the investors got unhappy and the developers they went adios and that's the problem it is not because it's a stupid idea the government actually really enjoyed that enjoy the idea and they are ready to like and the investors are ready to invest but uh, just sad i want to see it come back Anyway, it's almost as if this whole project would just a grift to milk global investors and potentially lend a contract with a desperate local government. Almost. Eh. Mm, I wouldn't say that's true. But now this treadling bus is back, if you can imagine. Only so okay, this is dumber. The okay. mastermind of this idea is Dahir Insad, which is apparently some um, engineering firm. Yeah, yeah, and then he's move on to some really you know, weird shit. Support me. That's thinking it of for his video. Um, 
yeah. I think he had some good analysis within it, but I feel like he just massively misunderstood the place of deployment of this system. It is not supposed to be deployed in like a narrow street in Europe. And that's what I think he is trying to, you know, convince himself into trying to say, oh, Shadow Bus is the all once and for all solution for everything that is public transport. It is not. Public transport needs trains. Public transport needs buses. And public transport can be done with straddle buses. But only in Beijing. Only in a very specific location. It's a very specific solution to this very specific problem that Beijing has. And trying to apply it everywhere else, especially when he's saying, like, in Europe, it does not make sense. But when we are talking about in that location it does and also the thing with harry potter pl pl please t t don't ever do that ever again it's so cringe and the thing with the status quo it does not make sense that's the general hollowization and basically the dualistic thinking and they're that's another problem that's another kind of worm that i can open not this video but next one if you guys want to watch it and it's not J.K. Rowling's thing. I'm not a Harry Potter fan. I don't like Harry Potter, but I hate his explanation on the status quo and Harry Potter even more. So, I'm just going to pretend I didn't see that part of the video and just talk about how Stratobus might have worked. It, it just very location-specific. And please do some more research before posting these kind of videos because I feel like this is just putting me... a you know, a cloud of doubts just above me to because I really do enjoy his videos previously. And now I just think, how much research do you actually do, Adam? How much do you actually do? Or do you just see, like, a new public transportation project and get your greasy fingers already <laughs> ready to, you know, smack the shit out of it because any new innovation is a bad innovation if you don't seem fit to put it in, let's say, Europe. It is fit for the location that's going to be deployed at, and it is a tragedy that it never came to be. And I'm sorry, Adam. That's a big flop. Do some more research next time. And anyway, it's been a long time since I made a video. I don't really know what to make with this channel. I just want to make whatever the fuck I want to make. <laughs> it's catered specifically to myself. Anyway, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.